in all aspects, right? I think that you have families that are sitting on the sidelines who've been really worried and, um, you know, trying to be just supportive and maybe trying to hold back that stress. But the moment that last day hits, it's usually like, let's celebrate. Your cancer is done. And I think that the patients want to do that as well. And then there's the period thereafter, right, where they get off of this high-speed train of treatment and they recognize, wait, I'm still not feeling well. And, and I want to just be back. I want to be re-engaged with my family and back at work and doing all of the things that I love, but I just am not there yet. Why? And, and so, you know, the last thing I ever want to say to any of my clients is you need to be patient. <laughs> Um, and so this provides that conversation early on, you know, let's look at what has happened with your treatment process or what's going to happen. And let's be mindful of that from the beginning for what you're going to need to get back to that place. So then that way the family can really high five on the other side of the arc <laughs> and say, okay, we've made it through. Now, what else do you need? Because it's a long journey, right? I think that I think cancer, it just changes things. And so from there on out, the body needs to have continuous maintenance of care. For this individual, we continued with the same 40-year-old female diagnosed with breast cancer, but this was a bigger issue all over. So the person ended up having bilateral mastectomy, had a tram flap reconstruction. So now we have multiple areas of the body that have had surgery and that need to have recovery from those surgical procedures. And then they're also adding in that chemotherapy, which is going to total up about 12 weeks of time and the 30 sessions of radiation. So this is really the big thing here is we're now providing 28 weeks of treatment for an individual. That's a long period of time. And that means then if we really wanna be realistic about caring for somebody who's gone through this process, that it's no longer looking at from January 1st to Jan July 24th as we've given you treatment, we'll see you now hereafter for surveillance, I think that in the full continuum of care for any patient, uh, what should really be done is that we match that. And this would be then 28 weeks of services that that person should be receiving in order to truly help them find what's going to be their new normal. And keeping in mind for this person, you know, somebody who's had a tram flap reconstructed surgery, that in and of itself can be a really long eight month, nine month, one year long process, but it can have longer term side effects because of the fact that we're changing the anatomy of this person. So my hope would be that within those 28 weeks, they absolutely would have their referrals to physical therapy or occupational therapy, but that they would be 100% evaluated for their lymphedema pre-screening and then given all of the additional services necessary to make them feel as if their body is whole again and that their chances of recovering in a full way not just from the treatments themselves but from all of what their body has been through would be supported um, by us as providers but certainly by the healthcare system so that would be that mirrored long 28 weeks um, so you're looking at that as, you know, more than a year when you put the two sides together. And I think that that's a big thing. If we have somebody that comes in January 1st with a diagnosis, and we as practitioners, as well as then the healthcare providers and those on the treatment side, could understand that this person's journey will extend for a year, then hopefully we would be looking at ways of packaging in all of the services that they need to truly be well.